Hi, Prince here. I'd like to share to you some intuition behind one of the most powerful models out there or one of the most powerful AI, which are artificial neural networks. We want to understand first the intuition behind the model, how the artificial neural network was inspired by actual brains so that hopefully we can understand the math and programming later on. In this session, we aim to first familiarize ourselves with some applications of neural networks. In this case, we will call them ANNs, which is short for artificial neural networks. We will learn what ANNs aim to accomplish. We will learn how biology inspired the design of ANNs, and we will compare biological and artificial neurons. ANNs are powering the most advanced AI systems. For example, Tesla's self-driving car is powered by an AI an artificial neural network AI that can understand surroundings and make decisions in almost real time. DeepMind's AlphaGo was able to play the game of Go and it was able to beat even the world champion at Go. We also have Salesforce's AI Economist, which was able to come up with a tax policy in simulation that beat human policies. ANNs are thus tools that are designed to replicate the capability of the brain to make useful inferences and decisions. And usually when we're designing something, we take inspiration from nature. For example, birds fly and they have wings, and we can take this kind of design from nature to design our own planes, like this one. But of course, they don't necessarily have to work the same exact way. When you look at planes, sure, it has wings, but those wings don't flap and it runs on engines and so forth. It has wheels instead of feet, and it doesn't eat. It uses some sort of fuel instead, but these things can fly farther away and higher than any bird. So the questions that researchers had was, we want something intelligent, and something already exists in nature that's intelligent, and it's the brain. How can we now understand it, right, so that we can come up with our own design? Well, in the past 100 plus plus years, we figured out that the brain is made up of cells called neurons and they're interconnected and they act as switches. Here we're showing a microscope image of a bunch of neurons activating. So sometimes they brighten up. They act like switches. And this is an important property because it turns out logic can be encoded using a bunch of switches. Even our computer chips, when you look at it, if you zoom in, they are made of transistors, which are effectively switches. Computation can thus arise from a network of switches. Now, if we zoom in into a single neuron, this is what it looks like. It's elongated and it has a body, the dendrites. The axon is this elongated part and it's covered by the myelin sheath and it has axon terminals. What happens is the neuron can transmit signals from other neurons through the dendrites and then the body decides if it should propagate a signal or not. And if it does decide to propagate the signal, the signal, which is something like a voltage, will propagate through the axon, and it is output by the axon terminals, which then feed into the dendrites of the other neurons. But also, the neuron can block the signal. Here is a figure showing the generated voltage by the neuron, and initially it's no voltage, and if there's an input signal that's not high enough and it doesn't breach the threshold, it's just gonna die down. And in other words, it's not gonna transmit that signal. But if that's input signal, okay, so which is, you can think of it as the sum of all these signals, they breach the threshold, the neuron will now fire an action potential or a nerve impulse and it will propagate through the axon. This is where the switch functionality of the neuron comes from. We can now design an artificial neuron based on our understanding of a real neuron. Here we're showing an illustration of an artificial neuron. It has inputs and each input has a weight. And the weight is just how much emphasis do we want to place on any single input because some inputs might be more important than others. Now you can also think of the weight as analogous to the myelin sheath. So remember, the myelin sheath covers the axon. And it turns out the thicker the myelin sheath, the faster the propagation of information here, of the signal. So it's like a weight of the signal. And then you sum up the weighted inputs, which then gets passed to the function. And this function simply maps the input to an output that also has a corresponding weight. So here's an example of that function. It's called the activation function. So here it's a sigmoid curve. 
if the weighted sum of inputs is over here, the output will be higher over here. But it's, if it's over here, this will be the output, it's lower. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to mimic the action potential. That if there's a certain kind of input, there's a corresponding generated voltage. Of course, it has to breach the threshold. And the threshold in our artificial neuron is the bias. In this case, it's the distance of the activation function from the y-axis. Now, why is that the threshold? It's because the bias can make activation easier or harder. For example, you have the same input for both of these charts, but here, the bias is shorter and here the bias is longer. Now, for the same input, the output here is high, but here, since the bias is higher, so it's like the threshold is higher, even with the same input, the output is low. In summary, let's compare the biological and the artificial neurons. They both have input signals, which are signals coming from other neurons. Dendrites accept the input signals, and these are the input connections of the artificial neuron. The axon terminals are the output connections, and they pass the signals to other neurons. The myelin sheath are the weights, and they increase or decrease the effect of signals to and from the neuron. The threshold is the bias, and it's the value that must be overcome by the input to activate the neuron, or it's how much harder it is to activate the neuron. And the action potential is the activation function, which is it's the signal generated by the neuron as a function of the inputs. And now that we understand how an artificial neuron works, you can now understand how an artificial neural network is because it's just a network of artificial neurons. So just like your brain is a network of biological neurons, an artificial neural network is a network of artificial neurons. Here's an example of an ANN for classifying handwritten digits. Remember, the neurons act as switches that add logic to our model. Here you have the digit 7, and then you flatten it into 784 pixels. And these feed into these neurons. And some of these get activated, these neurons in black. And they activate it based on the input signals multiplied by the weights, as well as the kinds of biases you have in each of these neurons. So it's the input, the weights, and the biases. And then they output here, and then these neurons get the input with the weights, and they also have the biases, and they produce an output, and ultimately this neuron corresponding to number seven gets activated. It's like a waterfall of computation. So in this session, we familiarized ourselves with some applications of ANNs. We learned what ANNs aim to accomplish. We learned how biology inspired the design of ANNs and we compared biological and artificial neurons. Thanks for watching.